All right, guys, on this video, we kind of got it broken up into about four things. We have a Cirrus pull the parachute that's being lowered in to the airport by a helicopter. We're also taking my helicopter with my wife to Aspen. We're making some aircraft wing parts. I know nobody wants to see anything about wings. And we're gonna take Scrappy, go full power, and see what the oil and cylinder temperatures do. So you guys know the drill. Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, I'm so happy to hear that there's a, a airplane that just came in, a Cirrus, another live save, pulling a parachute. Where they ended up going in was just so muddy. It's the kind of mud that when you walk in it, your shoes come off and it may have looked dry, but I feel like they did the right thing, pulled the chute. Now we really don't know exactly what happened. And since I don't like to speculate or guess how an airplane crashed, um, this one at least everyone walked away, they pulled the chute. But what caused the engine to fail? I heard from a guy who heard from a guy who heard from a guy, which means that's the, the reliability of the source. It sounds about right. What does this mean? It means, yes, I think that is correct. Um, so take it for what it's worth. This is what we think happened to this aircraft that caused them to pull the chute. At least it's a happy outcome. There's a helicopter dropping off a Cirrus that was involved in an accident. Alright guys, so another Cirrus parachute saved. This is at my home field and uh, it makes me even more excited I put a parachute in Scrappy. The people in this airplane, perfectly fine. Plane apparently came out of annual pretty recently. Oil line blew off, killed the engine completely, no place to land. This is why we want to do everything we can to be safe, even if it adds a little bit of weight. But uh, so happy to see you come in, a helicopter, bring it. Know that the people went home to their family. You guys, you just never know when things are gonna go bad, so let's stay safe. I'm just kind of looking this over. You can see the bottom of the flat hinges actually went down in the mud. The gear absorbed the impact. I'm really surprised I don't see it come all the way up here. Some of the Cirruses I've seen before, the impact was hard enough that it went into the bottom of the wing. This one's actually in really good shape compared to some others I've seen. You can see the step is bent up in. Looks like they, this is the tear out. You can see they just picked it up and set it back on where the strap pulls out of the Cirrus. Unbelievable small amount of damage considering that pulled that entire racetrack off. It, uh, this gear did hit the underside of the wing right here little fuel leak right here um, looks minor it is on an inspection plate but um, for having a catastrophic failure engine completely off and nowhere to land man that's pretty cool this is the best outcome possible this as sad as, as, sad as it is to see an airplane like this um, that's a good day and <laughs> they're still here they're still flying They'll be up in the air again soon. So, uh, wow, let's get back to work. All right, I'm doing something different. <laughs> I've been working on my wings, but I got a buddy coming over. He's gonna put some more upgrades on my computer. So my computer's gonna be offline. Ron's gone to Lake Powell. My kids are all gone. So I think it's time that my wife gets a little of my attention. So I think I'm gonna surprise her. Just call her up, let her know we're going out of town. I think I'm gonna take the helicopter to Aspen and just stay for a night at the resort. Come back, we'll see how it goes. I'll film along the way. Hey guys, it's pretty cool. We just landed about a half hour ago. 
got here just before the sunset and it's pretty cool we're walking around there's jets everywhere and a whole bunch of them all are from mexico and so we had to ask why is all these multi-million dollar jets lined up all from mexico and they said it's the mexican spring break and then they said next week is the brazilian airs so all the brazilian air aircraft are going to be hanging out up here next week so if you ever wanted to be motivated to work harder and push harder at your business come to aspen and look at 30 20 and 30 million dollar jets end to end they go as far as i can see the other way we're gonna go grab a big steak fill our bellies stay up late sleep in make an official break out of it then we'll fly home and go back to work <laughs> And on the way back, we've been going pinnacle to pinnacle, looking for a place to land and have lunch. And this is our lunch stop on the way home. And uh, we're at about 7,000 feet right now. This time we found almost a helipad, it's so big. This is just a plateau, probably 1,000 foot drop in some places, four or 500 in others, but there is no way on or off of this. So we have our own little private place to snuggle, have lunch, I'd say take a nap, but I don't do those. So <laughs> we're just gonna hang out for a bit, head back home. fuel tanks inside the wings. Now on Strappy, I've drawn in every single component in the wings, literally hundreds of custom parts. I'm doing wet wings on Strappy to get the maximum amount of fuel possible. In a cup, typically you get a tank or two tanks per side, turned together with a hose, and they're suspended and hanging inside the middle of the wing with some straps, and then you fabric around it. Now on Strappy, I need a lot more fuel and I wanna have a lot of range, and I not only want enough fuel for me, I wanna be able to pack enough fuel for some of my friends that don't have the range that I'm gonna have on Scrappy. And so I'm actually gonna have about 110 plus gallons just in the wings, and my other tank in the back of the plane giving me over 120 gallons of fuel. So it'd be nice to be able to go out, and if I need to, I've installed an additional pump and a switch on the wall and a line that I can run right into my buddy's planes, flip a switch, and give them all five or 10 gallons a piece, and let us keep going and, and extend the day. So I'm gonna be the cub tanker, I guess. So, um, but what I wanna do is make sure that down the road I don't have maintenance problems. So I'm designing a new door to get into the fuel tank. So if I ever need to do maintenance on it, I don't have to take any fabric off, which this is gonna be aluminum, I don't have to try and get in and repair a difficult leak. I'm actually doing very large doors, big enough that I could fit my head in it to inspect it. And instead of using a pro seal to seal those doors in, which is currently the method done on almost every wet wing out there, um, I'm using an O-ring seal. So I don't spend the most of, most of my day taking out screws and a screwdriver and prying and unsticking a bonded joint. I want to be able to just take it off, inspect it, or make a repair and put it back on in a couple minutes. The other thing I'm doing different, I've had some 421s, some older Cessnas and things that if we ever needed to get into, even Draco had a wet wing, had a leak in a certain bay, it got a little finicky, and it turned into all day job, trying to bend these things, get them off, try not to damage them, and then get them to seal tight again when we put them back on. And the openings were like this big, and I think, the engineer and the mechanic must have hated each other because the engineer did something that every mechanic probably hates him for. I learned that welders are often smarter than engineers. And made it just difficult to work on. So I'm going to make mine large enough that I can put my head in it, look around, see a repair, get both hands in it if I need to, 
and fix it. So this is my big giant door right here and uh, the O-ring seal. You kind of see it right here. There's four inspection bays and how big those are in the bottom of the wing. You can see some of my other inspection bays going in right here. That's the reverse side of this right there with the flanges on it. So I'm going to quickly go get these lasered, bend them up, machine this part, get some more parts ready for the wings. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, let me show you what we're doing today. We laser cut all these out. These are new door inserts. I got small, some extra large, some skinny ones, and these are 025. They're really thin, really flimsy, but the way it's done in a lot of aircraft like Cessna and some others, they just stick with a flat plate and they rivet it to the skin of the aircraft and they just leave it flat like this. But fortunately, we can draft in the computer the arcs we want. This particular one stays flat, but I can actually design in some little V cuts and I'm gonna fold these edges up and then the V cuts right here are set so that it will still be able to get a little arc to match the perfect curvature of the aircraft. And instead of having a plate like this on the bottom of the wing that you can see can distort with heat and you kind of see the bottom of the wings move a little bit wherever there's an inspection door. I'm taking the same amount of weight and material, designing in a 90 degree bend, and now you can see the difference. And what will happen is this part, once it gets riveted in, I've added no more weight, a little bit more work, preset in cut corners with a anti-fracture crack line hole in it. And this will then go in and when I rivet it on, it won't wave so much wherever there's an inspection door. So that's one. Another, right here we have our cross-check drawings we just quickly drew up. So as we bend it, we can cross-check the overall dimensions, make sure they'll still fit between our ribs. So we have one of these to do. So you guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. So I've got these back from bending them now. What I'm doing to get them all preset is all the holes I put in them, I made them fairly too small so that when I drill them, just in case there was a little tolerance error on the laser that cuts them, but I put two together back to back like this, clico it, and now that I've got it aligned, it stabilizes on the table better and I just go through and I quickly drill every one of these holes out. And since I only undersized them a couple thousandths, it just takes a second and I'll just work my way all the way around and drill every set of holes so that they're perfectly sized to the drill bit I need for the rivets and I wasn't relying on a laser to get it accurate. So I'll go through and do that. And then I come down to the next station, I preset and locked in my position for how much tension I want on my dimple dies. And I'm setting my dimples. I got two different sets of dimple dies. One to set the dimples uh, right above where the flush set countersink screw is gonna go from the outer skin door and then the other mini set of dimple dies for the flush set rivets for all my nut plates, my floating nut plates. So um, one of the things that really helped make this go smooth is when we were drawn up on the computer and it's just little details when I was sizing the door, it was easy to just move things a tiny bit, like a quarter inch one direction. And that would allow me to make the doors ambidextrous, meaning I can't put this in the wrong way and have one of these offset. So just little details allows me to make sure that when we assemble the plane, nothing goes off. So we got an assembly line. When you look at it, it doesn't seem like many, but I've got them all the way down to get to every cable, every junction, every bearing, everything in the plane has great access. I want to make sure they're all big and easy to, to work through. So there's a lot of them. Back to work. All right, we're about done making all our, what do you call them, tambourines. All right, so I wanna show you, this is on the bottom of the wing, perfectly straight. We got all the nut plates in it. We'll see how it works. I'm super happy, no more weight, little more work to do it. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Back to work. All right, guys, I've got at least one side done. So this is the side of my fuel inspection door and service door that has a tiny step in it. It's 50 thousandths of an inch thick for the skin of Scrappy. So this actually goes this direction and the skin will go underneath so that it's flush. I've gone ahead and tapered in 
for a flush set for all the screws. And inside the wing, this smooth area is where the O-ring will sit against. So the way the actual fuel tank door will go in is it goes in on an angle, pulls back and drops in flat. Screws go this way and the O-ring mates here. Now the reason I put the O-ring on the door itself and I'm machining in all the threads for these screws into the door itself is the threads is usually where you have a problem with wings. And so often they put the nut plates in the wing skin itself and then those, if they get cross-threaded, is one of the biggest nightmare repairs on an aircraft. So I thought, you know what, let's just redesign the plan so that the fuel door can come in and then drop in sideways, drop back on the top, and then the, the threads that screw it in are in the door. So if I ever have a problem, well, this has nothing to fail. There's no threads to go bad. This is permanently flush riveted into the aircraft, but the door itself, if we messed up some threads or we wrecked it, we can unscrew it, pull it out, and just reinsert a brand new door. And then it becomes a couple minute project, not an entire repair, repaint, a big giant mess. So the way a mechanic would want you to make a door. <laughs> For you engineers watching, think of the guys like me that want to wrench on an airplane. <laughs> anyway, we just rearranged it. I think it's gonna work good. These are done. I gotta make the other side finish out these. Let's get back to work. I'm so excited! Woo! -hoo! You ready, Scrappy? <laughs> We're gonna go drive it around. Have nothing better to do than play with Scrappy for a minute. <laughs> then we'll get back to work on some wings. I gotta get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is so cool. This is part of Garmin's capability on Scrappy. I can go back and look at the data and watch all my cylinder temperatures, oil temperatures, 
what speeds I hit, everything's recorded. And I brought it back in just to analyze how Scrappy did outside using full power, holding it, flying its tail, and actually just letting it sit for 10 minutes to see how hot we could get the engine to go, what the oils would go to. It was about an 80 degree day when we did it. And I'm going through these temperatures and the temperatures never got hot. Even just sitting, you could watch them come up, stabilize and hold, and then go up and down a couple of degrees. The oil was spot on. It literally was riding against the vernotherm, which means I even have more capacity still to go. Sitting right at about 188, right where I want it. And then the cylinders didn't even get close to 400. They stayed right where you need it to make sure that if there was any moisture or condensation that occurred in your engine overnight, that the temperatures got warm enough to burn off the oil, that's on the oil temperature, but also that the cylinders never got too hot. And I didn't even have the belly door open, my giant cow flap belly flap. So to be able to sit on a hot day, full power and keep everything perfect. I, I feel like I got lucky and I'm super excited to see how it does in the air. And if I need to, of course it was only 80 degrees, maybe down on a lower sea level, which gives me more horsepower on a 110, 120 degree day out of Vegas. Maybe I'll need to open up the cow flap, but I have so much more cooling capacity. I'm super excited about it. So far so good, we won't know until we fly it. But right now, I feel confident we're going to be able to fly around an eight-cylinder in a Cub and keep it absolutely cool. So, cross our fingers. We'll know soon, I hope. <laughs>